Chapter 4 in My Father's Dragon. My Father Finds the River. The jungle began just beyond a narrow strip of beach. Thick, dark, damp, scary jungle. My father hardly knew where to go, so he crawled under a wahoo bush to think and ate eight tangerines. The first thing to do, he decided, was to find the river because the dragon was tied somewhere along its bank. Then he thought, if the river flows into the ocean, I ought to be able to find it quite easily if I just walk along the beach far enough. So my father walked until the sun rose and he was quite far from the ocean rock. It was dangerous to stay near them because they might be guarded in the daytime. He found a clump of tall grass and sat down. Then he took off his rubber boots and ate three more tangerines. He could have eaten 12, but he hadn't seen any tangerines on this island. And he could not risk running out of something to eat. My father slept all day that day and only woke up late in the afternoon. When he heard a funny little voice saying, Clear, clear, what a dear little duck. I mean, dear, dear, what a queer little rock. My father saw a tiny paw rubbing itself on his knapsack. He lay very still, and the mouse, for it was a mouse, hurried away, muttering to itself, I must smell tumduddy. I mean, I must tell somebody. My father waited a few minutes and then started down the beach because it was almost dark now and he was afraid the mouse really would tell somebody. He walked all night and two scary things happened. First, he just had to sneeze, so he did, and somebody close by said, Is that you, monkey? My father said. Yes? Then the voice said, you must have something on your back, monkey. And my father said, yes, because he did. He had his knapsack on his back. What do you have on your back, monkey? Asked the voice. My father didn't know what to say because what would a monkey have on its back? And how would it sound telling someone about it if it didn't have something? Just then another voice said, I bet you're taking your sick grandmother to the doctors. My father said, yes, and hurried on. Quite by accident, he found out later that he had been talking to a pair of tortoises. The second thing that happened was that he nearly walked right between two wild boars. who were talking in low, solemn whispers. When he first saw the dark shapes, he thought they were boulders. Just in time, he heard one of them say, there are three signs of a recent invasion. First, fresh tangerine peels were found under the wahoo bush near the ocean rocks. Second, a mouse reported an extraordinary rock some distance from the ocean rocks which upon further investigation simply wasn't there. However, more fresh tangerine peels were found in the same spot, which is the third sign of invasion. Since tangerines do not grow on our island, somebody must have brought them across the ocean rocks from the other island, which may or may not have something to do with the appearance and or disappearance of the extraordinary rock reported by the mouse. After a long silence, the other boar said, You know, I think we're talking or taking all this too seriously. Those peels probably floated over here all by themselves. And you know how unreliable mice are. Besides, if there had been an invasion, I would have seen it. Perhaps you're right, said the first boar. Shall we retire? 
Whereupon they both trundled back into the jungle. Well, that taught my father a lesson, and after that he saved all his tangerine peels. He walked all night and toward morning came to the river. Then his troubles really began. Chapter 5. My father meets some tigers. The river was very wide and muddy, and the jungle was very gloomy and dense. The trees grew close to each other, and what room there was between them was taken up by great high ferns with sticky leaves. My father hated to leave the beach, but he decided to start along the riverbank where at least the jungle wasn't quite so thick. He ate three tangerines, making sure to keep all the peels this time, and put on his rubber boots. My father tried to follow the riverbank, but it was very swampy, and as he went farther, the swamp became deeper. When it was almost as deep as his boot tops, he got stuck in the oozy, mucky mud. My father tugged and tugged and nearly pulled his boots right off, but at last... He managed to wade to a drier place. Here the jungle was so thick that he could hardly see where the river was. He unpacked his compass and figured out the direction he should walk in order to stay near the river. But he didn't know that the river made a very sharp curve away from him, just a little way beyond. And so as he walked straight ahead, he was getting farther and farther away from the river. It was very hard to walk in the jungle. The sticky leaves of the ferns caught at my father's hair and he kept tripping over roots and rotten logs. Sometimes the trees were clumped so closely together that he couldn't squeeze between them and he had to walk a long way around. He began to hear whispery noises, but he couldn't see any animals anywhere. The deeper into the jungle he went, the surer he was that something was following him. And then he thought he heard whispery noises on both sides of him as well as behind. He tried to run, but he tripped over more roots and the noises only came nearer. Once or twice he thought he heard something laughing at him. At last, he came out into a clearing and ran right into the middle of it so that he could see anything that might try to attack him. Was he surprised when he looked and saw 14 green eyes coming out of the jungle all around the clearing? And when the green eyes turned into seven tigers, the tigers walked around him in a big circle looking hungrier all the time. And then they sat down and began to talk. I suppose you thought we didn't know you were trespassing in our jungle. Then the next tiger spoke. I suppose you're going to say you didn't know it was our jungle. Did you know that not one explorer has ever left this island alive? said the third tiger. My father thought of the cat and knew this wasn't true. But of course, he had too much sense to say so. One doesn't contradict a hungry tiger. The tigers went on talking in turn. You're our first little boy, you know. I'm curious to know if you're especially tender. Maybe you think we have regular meal times, but we don't. We just eat whenever we're feeling hungry, said the fifth tiger. And we're very hungry right now. In fact, I can hardly wait, said the sixth. I can't wait, said the seventh tiger. And then all the tigers said together in a loud roar, let's begin right now and they moved in closer. My father looked at those seven hungry tigers and then he had an idea. He quickly opened his knapsack and took out the chewing gum. The cat had told him that tigers were especially fond of chewing gum, which was very scarce on the island. So he threw them each a piece, but they only growled. 
As fond as we are of chewing gum, we're sure we'd like you even better. And they moved so close that he could feel them breathing on his face. But this is very special chewing gum, my father said. If you keep on chewing it long enough, it will turn green. And then if you plant it, it will grow more chewing gum. And the sooner you start chewing, the sooner you'll have more. Tiger said, why you don't say? Isn't that fine? And as each one wanted to be the first to plant the chewing gum, they all unwrapped their pieces and began chewing as hard as they could. Every once in a while, one tiger would look into another's mouth and say, nope, it's not done yet. Until finally, they were all so busy looking into each other's mouths to make sure that no one was getting ahead, that they forgot all about my father.